Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Labs. So in this video, I wanted to discuss what is it like uh, a day to day schedule of a big data engineer, be it this uh, COVID scenario where all of us are working from home or uh, be it uh, day to day official work when you go to your office, the uh, process and the uh, day to day activities remain sort of same. Only the thing is uh, a small amount of traveling time is uh, saved depending upon how far you uh, stay from your office. So you might find uh, many random videos with the titles like day in a life of a data engineer or something like that, where they show more what they eat rather than what they work on. So I try to keep it simple and to the point so that it could help you and uh, maybe some of you who are trying to switch to big data. And if you have a little um, off project experience and uh, you have lesser idea like what it goes in actual big data project. So just a day to day activity of a, a big data engineer. I'll try to uh, tell in this video. So I'll uh, keep this video more focused on the development perspective of it. Although there are a few more uh, domains in uh, big, any big data project that you can go into it like uh, big data admin or any uh, support activities also. But I'll stick to more of a development uh, perspective of it. What uh, developer faces, what I faced at one time, what all schedules I was going through and uh, I have seen multiple projects. So maybe an overview that I can give of uh, a day to day activity will uh, help most of you. So uh, usually our uh, day starts at near about uh, 930 to 10 depends upon um, how much work you have left earlier or any important call is scheduled. So uh, usually it is 930 to 10 uh, right now in COVID scenarios. And also uh, when you used to travel to office, I don't think any important activity starts before that until and unless uh, you have some important work that uh, you skipped or uh, you postponed from the previous day. So in that case, you might have to log in earlier, but uh, usually it is 9.30 to 10. Also that depends upon some uh, important calls in some projects. Uh, it, it also starts at 11, 11.30. So that depends totally on uh, your project. Now. What call I am talking about this basically the first call of the day uh, is supposed to be a scrum call and usually most of the uh, projects uh, now follow uh, agile and the most important call of any uh, agile handled project is a scrum call. What happens in scrum call uh, your scrum master schedules this call al along with all the team members. And in that call, if that uh, project is very professionally handled, then uh, make sure uh, this call is supposed to be very short, uh, usually not more than 15 minutes, where all of your team members, uh, including you, have to tell only three things. That what you did yesterday, what you are going to do today, and are there any challenges that you are facing? That's it. Very short because there are other team members as well and everything should wind up in uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So that is how a scrum call is being handled. We are not supposed to discuss the issues like uh, I was doing this yesterday, but I was facing this issue and you keep uh, asking your teammates like, uh, did you face this? How to solve this? You are not supposed to do that in a scrum call. That is supposed to be very short. You do that offline. Connect with your teammates, just tell them or your team leads and that you are facing this and just sort it out. Not in this specific call. So this is supposed to be the first call. Now in the same call, uh, there is an additional activity you can say uh, can be done by your scrum master or by you or some of your lead that uh, they check the updates in uh, the uh, agile tool that you are using, let's say Jira. So whatever you have done yesterday, uh, the lead or the scrum master might be sharing his screen and uh, whatever you are telling the proper um, steps you have taken for that or not, not the coding perspective of it, but um, uh, let's say you did uh, one particular task. So uh, the Jira updates will also be checked, might be checked, might not be checked, depends upon the project or your scrum master and how 
the communication between your team is uh, but uh, that should also be verified in the same call so whatever you have done it's uh, better to update each and every step that you are doing uh, along with the uh, very specific documents of it let's say you have developed some code uh, you should be uploading your uh, unit test uh, uh, screenshots or whatever uh, documents uh, are supposed to be maintained you should be updating and keep uh, updating on that uh, task of yours so that can also be checked on the uh, same call I'm telling you all this, maybe I'm not sure how much project you have worked on, but uh, maybe in your interviews, if this is asked, so you should have a background that uh, how it all goes uh, in any actual uh, project. Now, once this call gets over, then you are back to your uh, specific tasks. So whatever is assigned to you, uh, whatever is pending, you start working on that. And the same process follows. You have to keep updating on Jira and whatever task is there, you should uh, keep updating there. Now, uh, from my side, like uh, uh, being a seven or eight, seven to eight uh, years of experience, um, I was uh, sort of stuck in two places where uh, I also was supposed to uh, solve some problems of uh, others as well as some small tasks are also given to me. So the main challenging thing for me right now is uh, I'm not only the core developer, uh, also I have been given the responsibilities of solving some challenging problems uh, which others in my team are facing and also uh, building uh, small utilities for performance related things and all. So um, as a developer, your task can start uh, soon after the scrum call, but my actual task uh, were hindered by all these uh, pings and calls and uh, people used to pull me in some calls due to some issues and all so uh, these thing these issues could be uh, some of the coding challenges like uh, uh, recently uh, what i remember is um, the input file that was given to us was not any not in any standard format that spark could, could recognize uh, so uh, it was in a binary format generated by mainframes so uh, we had to process in big data so what happened is uh, those file first of all uh, those are in binary format should be first converted into any readable format like ascii format and uh, then it has to be read in uh, spark data frames and uh, there is no uh, such uh, option uh, to directly read uh, binary files in uh, spark data frame before uh, spark 3.0 we are uh, still not using Spark 3.0. So uh, some of such kind of coding challenges that uh, can come uh, that uh, I used to get pull in and uh, some of the test uh, cases scenarios like uh, people develop the code, test cases are still failing, code coverage is not proper. So all those kind of issues I get to pull in. So usually uh, most of my time goes in this because people um uh, the best way for them to get their problem solved is via screen share so they just share me the screen and just tell uh, their problem in two words and uh, um, i had to uh, go through like what they have written and uh, stuff like that so uh, that is uh, sort of uh, irritating for me as well because uh, I like uh, whatever problem I am solving that should be in my hands so until unless I pull that code and develop it is much faster for me but uh, there is no option so I do have to do that and uh, personally telling from my side um, uh, being a seven or eight years of experience I uh, cannot even get to my work uh, before five or six pm yeah that's what uh, amount of time it takes but the good thing is that uh, you learn a lot so that also depends upon your project i have worked on many projects it's not all the projects that give you such kind of opportunities but uh, mostly in big data uh, uh, as much as problems you solve be it, be it your problems or be it uh, other people's problems um, the more you learn so uh, that's the good part so never be afraid of any problems every project has problems no code can be developed without uh, challenges so that's that's the best part of uh, uh, a big data project actually because mostly all the 99 percent of the problems i see are very challenging you won't even know what's going wrong 
so uh, that is the good part i i should say so that's how my uh, day starts actually my work starts at 5 to 6 pm so that is when i um, come back to what task i have been assigned so i try to complete that and uh, somehow um, if i manage to do that it's fine uh, if it is not um, i uh, log off and uh, continue uh, the next day but uh, um, it's always better to stick to the story points so story points just a background every task is given a set of story points so uh, one story point is e equal to one uh, day of one particular resource or an employee so uh, the hours can be uh, depending upon the uh, organization like six hours per day or eight hours per day so uh, one day of one uh, resource or an employee is uh, accounts to one story point so let's say uh, any task is assigned two story points so um, any one person of that team can take two of his working days to complete that so it's better to you stick to that so that it can be uh, completed within time so that's how it goes now after you complete all your coding part uh, then comes your code review this is a very important uh, part of any development project in big data or in any uh, development project in general whatever code you develop throughout the day that has to go through a code review process now um, again uh, from my part uh, issue for me is that I am also the part of the panel of uh, code reviewing. So um, even uh, when I get to my work at 5 to 6 p.m., I again have to uh, switch to the same call, which again goes for uh, around uh, 45 minutes or one hour, where I have to review other people's code. And I'm happy to join that because I uh, see many mistakes that people have made and even I learn uh, much from them so that I don't make uh, and uh, I can guide other people who are uh, who tend to make those mistakes. Now, after this code review process, there is a window of around uh, um, uh, 30 to 45 minutes or uh, an hour, you can say. Uh, uh, there, uh, whatever code comments review comments uh, uh, the pe people have got they make those changes the small uh, changes that uh, have been uh, commented by the code reviewers and then um, they commit that back and raise a pull request so pull request is a request which a developer makes to um, take their code to the higher branch so usually people uh, develop their code in feature branch then uh, once that code uh, is reviewed and it is approved in a pull request the code can be merged to a higher branch let's say a dev branch or a master branch so after all this um, it's uh, usually people call it a day and they log off and uh, this uh, particular scenario happens um, till thursday you can say because uh, friday or the end of sprint let's say it's a two week sprint so uh, every second Friday is a um, code review so sprint review you can say so that uh, goes to the client so uh, whatever all this activity we have done in two weeks um, all this code changes and what developments we have made we have to um, demo in front of the client so uh, he is aware that what all we uh, we have done and most important part if you have to stick to your quality checks and all uh, from the client side uh, all this uh, um, agile tools every task every subtask should be updated well so uh, you don't even know when client is going to check all this so uh, before code uh, demo uh, this is speci uh, specifically taken care of so everything is updated then we are good to go now uh, this all specific scenario which i told you this is uh, um, uh, focused on the majority of your uh, concerned project what you are thinking like you'll be going in a big data project you'll be uh, developing the applications and all but this is not actually the case every time um, whatever i told this was the scenario of uh, your um, uh, project where any particular application or a tool is being developed it is in a development phase so at that time 
every day you'll be getting new requirements every day uh, you'll be uh, developing uh, maybe you'll be taking two three sprints to develop that uh, feature so uh, this is a day to day activity but uh, what if uh, there are still scenarios that uh, you have already developed or uh, some other team has already developed the tool then in that case this same day to day activities will have a slight change so uh, maybe uh, after development when the code gets deployed and it uh, starts to work in uh, maybe uat or uh, maybe in production so at that time from the developer side uh, maybe you will be kept uh, on a buffer that uh, in case any issue comes then from the development team you have to address that there will always be a support team sitting once the code is in uh, production so support team will always be sitting in front on level 1 so that uh, they can address the uh, upfront issues but uh, what happens in any new tool i have seen that uh, the support team does not actually uh, owns any particular issue so they might say this is a new thing i don't know let let's push that to a developer so at that time your role might change a little bit you have to see what all issues are there you have to answer maybe the, there is no issue the application is supposed to uh, work that way but no one knows so uh, maybe your role can be that that you don't have to develop anything maybe you have to develop in case any enhancements comes in but uh, there is uh, the uh, amount of work is less but uh, the attention required from you is more so there can be such scenarios so i hope uh, after uh, all this uh, small background that i gave uh, you are now aware what all goes on the background and uh, on the very specific ground level what goes um and uh, maybe you can um, take some uh, specific points from this and i'm sure this is one of the uh, most important question that is asked in the interviews that what you used to do so uh, i hope this video will help you so if you have any more questions or if you want to share your uh, project experiences please uh, write us on the comment section below and uh, i hope you enjoyed this please hit that like button if you really did and please subscribe to gk code labs if you have not already done Thank you guys see you later. Mm -hmm.